Hello everyone, this is Llama Llama, and this is a story, um, so please go find the first video for context, um, please read the description, these videos are sounding board for myself, for self-growth, yes, nah, self-growth, um, self-thought, and so please uh, go ahead and click off. I'll wait a second for anybody who's not interested. This sort of covers mature content as well as some graphic and some other stuff that is not necessarily for everybody. Um, like I said, this is for myself, self-reflection, and sort of just a story. Um, so I'm going to pause. All right. So this story is about me finger painting with my own blood as a child, sort of. Um, so kind of some context. Uh, so my grandma was in the Hitler Youth Program. My mom ended up sort of damaged. Um, and she moved to the States. And so she was from Germany originally, but she was kind of had some issues, and she never particularly wanted kids, so, um, yeah, so, to start off, I had poor vision as a kid, I mean, I literally had a lazy eye, specifically, that was threatening to basically make me blind in that eye, um, sort of at a minimum from what I was told by the doctors, but that's just, this is just more context, um, so, my hand-eye coordination wasn't particularly good, um, which meant that um, what ended up happening was I ended up getting hurt. Um, we were homeschooled, and I don't remember exactly. I thought I was roughhousing, but I don't remember if Ryan was there. I don't particularly remember if he was there or not. Um... So I ended up slipping, falling, and basically either breaking a tooth or one of my, you know, baby teeth or something. I did something um, horribly by falling uh, some distance or, and hitting my face on something. So um, I freaked out. And the reason I freaked out was because I was bleeding a lot. And so... Um, I went over to my mother, um, and basically she was on her computer, and I remember this very vaguely, or not very vaguely, but very specifically, actually, um, and I said the words, help me, and I was trying to keep all the blood in my mouth, um, because my mouth had pretty much filled with blood, now, keep in mind, I was, like, something like five or something, four, somewhere, somewhere pretty darn young, um, and so I drooled a mouthful of blood onto my hands that were cupped underneath my mouth. And I said, help me. Um, and she specifically said, you gross, go clean it up. Um, and so before I was very frightened, but um, it sort of changed my mindset of what was... Um, what I should be scared of, I guess, or what was, um, so I, I went to the bathroom, um, because, you know, where else do you go to clean stuff up? So I wasn't really tall enough to get on top of the counter to really particularly wash my hands, um, even with this little stepping stool that we had that was, you know, at least a foot, you know, I was really short, um, I was young, so, um, I remember taking my hands that were just covered in, you know, because I drooled a mouth full of blood on them and trying to get onto the counter and making a complete mess of the bathroom. I'm talking about bloody handprints everywhere. Um, and I remember, you know, getting onto the, and the counter was slippery because I mean, I was still drooling at the same time and I was still bleeding. Um, and so I get up there and you know, to stabilize myself, I put my hands on the mirror, and now there's blood on the mirror, and I don't know what to do, uh, you know, I'm, lying, I'm trying to clean things up, I'm like, you know, and 
I don't even know how to stop the bleeding. Um, so I remember realizing that, you know, this wasn't going to work. I didn't know how to stop this. So I went over and I got some toilet paper. Um, and I, I got back down off, you know, right? Grabbed, you know, toilet paper, paper towel, whatever I had. And started trying to, like, just stop the bleeding by putting pressure on it. Um, well, I mean, I kind of sort of didn't really know pressure. But I, you know first put it on and it hurt you know right it, you know you're bleeding you're sticking something and pushing on it it doesn't feel good um and then when i realized just covering it didn't work you yeah you started trying to stop it and force it to stop and you know i you know at first i grabbed a couple sheets and that didn't work because you know you bled right through it so i kept going up and down and up and down um and the whole ordeal took something like two hours to a stop the bleeding and the b start cleaning really, um, and clean up the mess because you know smearing blood and all this other stuff. You're drooling on your clothes. You're drooling on the floor. You're drooling on, you know, you're, you've you've got blood print, you know, on on the wall and mostly the mirror. Um, so what ends up happening is, you know, I finally stopped the bleeding and. This time when I, you know, take the paper towel or uh, toilet paper off of it, it's not bleeding anymore. And so then becomes the process of cleaning it up. And so, and strangely enough, you know, the blood, you know, there was enough of it that, and it wasn't all dry yet that it reminded me of my red, you know, my little, you know, um you know, hand paint stuff, and so I sat there, and, you know, and you're still a kid, right, you're, once you're no longer in pain, you kind of get distracted, and I remember just finger painting a little bit, you know, drawing some stuff, you know, not very much, because I, I didn't want to get in trouble for not cleaning everything up, and, you know, that took a really long time, but that was just sort of the start of everything, is sort of neglect and um, the mindset being changed as to what was acceptable to happen and what wasn't. Um, so yeah.